Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel for my breakdown of the new DLC story trailer. FromSoft have been up to their usual tricks again and sprung this trailer on us practically unannounced, but fortunately I'm here to lay everything out clearly, see how it measures up to what we learned in the last trailer, and discuss what's new. That, actually, is the most salient point, because the thing that struck me the most is how little we really got here. Much of the trailer was given over to what we've seen before, and the significant revelations were quite brief. Nevertheless, we still have lots to unpack, so we may as well jump in the deep end where the trailer starts. This brief opening section is, in my opinion, the most significant in terms of lore, because although it's clearly intended only as a little introduction, it has massive implications for how we understand the metaphysical structure of the in-game world. What we have here is, in quasi-religious terms, a creation narrative. The bangles, clothing and long hair clearly identify the figure as Marika, and the events being shown are described as an affair. Affair is an interesting and very leading choice of word, because on one level it can simply mean a series of events, but it can also have the connotations of an illicit romantic relationship. Indeed, we are explicitly told that whatever happened involved seduction and betrayal. Immediately, the whole sequence gave me very strong Adam and Eve vibes, painting Marika as the temptress figure. This we already know to be typical of her character because of how she deceived, seduced and betrayed Renala, even going so far as using a masculine alter ego. This proves that from the very beginning, Marika has been ruthless in her ascent to power, and every partner, spouse or tarnished has been nothing more to her than a stepping stone on the way. These confirmations on Marika are, however, incidental. The opening sequence is really concerned with showing us the creation of the world, or at any rate, the recreation of it, because clearly we already have a world in a more primitive state. This, I think, must be taking place at the end of the Crucible era, and from here on, anyone belonging to that old world are the outcasts beyond renewal. Whatever the exact nature of this betrayal was, it was clearly far-reaching in terms of the fallout. The landscape is practically littered with bodies. Piles of corpses rise up like mountains, or perhaps you might say, like a gateway through which we see our first glimpse of the golden future. From one of the bodies, Marika reaches into the torn robes and pulls out a handful of golden strands. It's hard to make out precisely what we are seeing, but the overall imagery in this shot is undeniably vaginal. This is not just the creation of a new world, it is the birth of one. It is also the moment where gold, as a substance, undergoes some kind of metamorphosis, raising it from a mere metal to the manifestation of divine, creative light. A bright new world emerges where it shines, and a dark one festers in the shadow it casts behind. Those of you who played Dark Souls 3 will recall similar themes in the Ashes of Ariandel DLC. There, we also saw a decaying world, crying out to be purged with fire. Here, however, something quite different is happening. This world is at war with itself. It isn't clear whether Mesmer is bent on power, or whether he is gold-crazed and obsessed with purification. Perhaps this is all vainly pursued in service to the uncaring mother he longs for. In any case, we see the bodies of his defeated enemies impaled, as his epithet suggests, and we see some more of the enemy from the earlier trailer. Incidentally, you may have seen this still image released on Twitter of a new enemy. Judging by the feet, hair and general crucible style features, I wonder if this might be the second phase of this fight. The similarities are certainly there, although I don't know where the ring sides would have come from. At this point, the trailer jumps again, now to Mikola, who we are told has abandoned everything – his body, strength, and even fate. This seems to raise more questions than answers. Until now, the going theory has been that Mikola came here in an active attempt to take control of his fate, and cure his birth curse, and also that of his sister. 
Clearly, he has left his mark on this world and has a band of dedicated followers. Others question what he is doing here at all. It seems his motives will remain a mystery until we find him. Perhaps he thought that in this negative reflection of the Golden World, his cursed state there would be cured here. And that, I'm afraid, is it. The length of this trailer was in line with what we normally get from FromSoft, and yet somehow I feel almost a bit cheated. What we learned we mostly inferred from scraps of material, and the remainder was little more than we already knew. And yet still, I can't describe how excited I was watching it, and how much more excited I am even now just imagining how much more there will be to discover. We have a whole new world, every bit as war-torn, intriguing and secretive as the base game to explore. I'm poised and ready to continue bringing you all the lore breakdowns you could want, so make sure to subscribe so as not to miss anything. This DLC is going to breathe fresh life back into the game, and I can't wait to see what lies ahead. Until then, or at least until my next video, thank you for watching.